Okay, so now we're interested in what force does the planet exert on the star. So what, what force the star feels? Well, that's an interesting question. Is it going to be equal and opposite? It, it could be, but let's, let's think about it. Um, okay, so, so here's a question to think about before we calculate it. So the sun has a mass about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Uh, the earth has a mass of about 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So the earth is a lot less massive. What is true about the magnitude of the gravitational force here? So is uh, does the earth exert the force exerted on the sun by the earth? Is it smaller in magnitude than the force exerted on the earth by the sun? Or is it the same? Or is neither one of these correct? After all, the Earth is just this puny little thing compared to the Sun. So is it going to be? What's, it, what's the story here? What is, think, about, think about the calculation you do. Think about what this equation would tell us. Okay, well, so 60% say it's going to be exactly the same in magnitude. That sure is what the equation seems to tell us, because look at the calculation we did. It had the gravitational constant. This was the mass of the, sun, the star. That was the mass of the planet. That was the distance between them. If we do the other calculation, we're going to have g times the mass of the planet times the mass of the star over the magnitude looks like it's going to be the same. How does it manage to do that? How does this little puny thing manage to pull on the sun as hard as the sun can, big, big sun can pull on it? It's not really that mysterious if you think about it with an idea, basically an idea from calculus of dividing a big thing up into small pieces and thinking about the pieces individually. So let's, let's take a simpler example of an object, one object that has a mass of 30 kilograms and one that has a mass of 10 kilograms, okay, and they're going to attract each other gravitationally. Let's see how that works out to be the same. So here's the object whose mass is, is 30 kilograms. And we're going to represent it as 3 10 kilograms. We're going to divide it into 3 10 kilogram pieces. And then here's our 10 kilogram object over here. And this equation says that the force the big guy exerts on the little guy should be equal in magnitude to the force the little guy exerts on the big guy. Okay, so here's this 30 kilogram thing. So it pulls on this with a force that's that big. So that's the force due to that. How is it? How does it get that big? Well, it's the sum of the force exerted by this piece and that piece and that piece. So really we could write it as, if we call these 1, 2, and 3, we could exert, write it as the force exerted by 1 and the force exerted by 2 and the force exerted by 3. So it's the sum of those three forces due to the three pieces that are acting on this. Okay, now let's look at it the other way. What about the forces here due to the, the other guy? Well, this exerts a force. These two things are the same mass, so the force one exerts on this guy here, we'll call him 4, is going to be equal to the force 4 exerts on 1, so there's that force. 
And the force that 2 exerts on this is going to be the same in magnitude as the force it exerts on the other one. And the force 3 exerts on this. So here's another force that's... And so basically when we add these up, we're going to get forces that are the same magnitude. These, these three things add up to a net force that's that big. And those three things add up to a net force that's that big, and they're actually equal and opposite. Now, the direction's different. And the direction gets taken care of. How do we get the direction different? What changes here to make the direction come out better? R hat changes, because now we have the position of the star relative to the planet. That's exactly right, Craig. OK, so we can calculate gravitational forces. This property of equal and opposite forces is called reciprocity. Um, it's true for gravitational forces. It's true for electric forces. It's not true for every possible force there is. In fact, we find that it's not true for magnetic forces, um, which don't actually act along the line between objects. So it's not, it's not always true. 